Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and if this is your first time checking out my channel, I really, really appreciate you being here. Today we are going to be doing kind of a different video. Um, we are going to be doing a haul video or really what board games did I get at Gen Con 2024. <music> Um, I actually just went on a crazy trip. I went to Gen Con and I taught ARCs with uh, Leader Games and then I went ahead to D23 uh, with Ravensburger and taught all of their games. So I've had quite a couple weeks behind me. So I'm very tired. So bear with me um, as we're going to go into what games I acquired. Um, I'm also going to be including a couple of other games that I acquired during that time period. So this isn't just going to be the games that I got at Gen Con. It will be a few other games that I received during that time, uh, maybe because of Gen Con or other reasons. So I am excited to dive right in. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go from the smallest box to the largest box down, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about each game, maybe why I got it or other information that kind of comes up as I'm talking. So we're going to start off with the smallest box game that I got, which is going to be Rebel Princess. Um, actually, cool deal about this game. I played it at Gen Con, and that's one of the reasons why I was actually interested in it. I was interested in it before, but after playing it, I was like, no, this game I need to get. I have been kind of looking for more small box games that can kind of run with a larger group of people. So this is um, by Bezier Games, and it is two sorry three to six players and it's it's basically just a trick taking game but the rules of the trick uh change each round so you could play like five rounds let's just say and the rules on what wins and what doesn't change each of those five rounds and there's a done there's a ton of different cards that can randomize every single time you are playing tricks and in that game you're basically trying to get the least amount of points um and so you're trying to avoid certain cards the princes from proposing to you really really fun game i'm very glad that i got it i'm so excited to kind of just play it with people i feel like this was a perfect one for like a lot of the people that i hang around with it's one that i can play with pretty much anyone so starting off really strong with rebel princess was so happy to go ahead and get a copy of that Next up, one of the things that I was looking for was more kind of two player only games. And one of the games that I ended up getting was Jekyll and Hyde versus Scotland Yard. Um, funny thing is, is I actually have not played uh, Jekyll and Hyde. So I have no reference on what this game is like other than the fact that it seemed like it would be really fun. And it was a two player cooperative game that it kind of what I was thinking was I really enjoyed Sale, which was a trick taking game that's two player. And this is a trick taking game that's two player cooperative. And I want more games like that. I want to be able to play only two player games with Kate um, or, you know, whoever, but it's it's mostly going to be Kate. Um, so very excited about Jekyll and Hyde that basically what I know about it is that it's a two player cooperative trick taking game um, and you're playing Jekyll and Hyde and you're trying to basically not get caught by Scotland Yard, I would assume, but really glad I got this. That would be the second game that I got. Oh, also, by the way, um, I will mention if I got one of these for free, um, I did not get any of these games for free except for one game, which I'm very thankful of. Um, I do not ask for games for free. Uh, it's just, <clears throat> I just don't, I don't know why. Um, maybe I should, honestly, <laughs> I probably save money, but no, I'd rather honestly support creators uh, or sorry, publishers. So I'm happy with my choices. So we've got uh, the first game and only game that I got for free, which is Kinfire Delve. Uh, this can be a two player or solo game. And honestly, it was really, really fitting that um, I got this from Ilya. Thank you, Ilya. Really, 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 really appreciate you um, because I went to D23 and was actually able to solo this. And it is very, very fun. It is like a dungeon crawling game run by cards and dice. And it's really, really easy to pick up. I learned it in probably not even 15 minutes um, and it was already going with very little questions but that is uh, Kinfire Delve Scorn's Stockade uh, once again thank you Ilya and the rest of these games and the, the other two um, I, I purchased all of these so the next one is another two player game and I got this for a couple of reasons this is Dracula versus Van Helsing this is a two player only um, 
semi asymmetric game from what I have learned. Um, and it kind of works a little bit interestingly where you're, I believe, picking a card, doing the effect, um, and then replacing it with one of your own. And you're kind of bidding for these different areas, trying to have a high number in there to control it. Um, and I'm not exactly sure of the exact goal, but I believe that obviously Van Helsing is trying to hunt down Dracula and Dracula is trying to infect a certain number of people. And that's kind of one of the ways that the game kind of ends or the victory condition is found out. Um, cool note about this is that Weberson Santiago, the artist, uh, he did sail and I love his art so much. This, this artwork is absolutely phenomenal. So uh, just really, really excited to pull this out. I read the whole rulebook at the airport and it seemed really, really easy and approachable. So really, really excited here. Um, that is Dracula versus Van Helsing. Okay, so this is the first game that I did not get at Gen Con, um, but I received a big box uh, from Kickstarter while I was at Gen Con. And when I got home, I was so excited to receive this. Um, if you guys know my channel, there was a video that I made where I talked about how much I loved this game and it has, it's so different from most of the games that I'm into. Um, this is Epic Spell Wars uh, Anarchy at the Arena. This is Epic Spell Wars, basically box six. This is the spell crafting game. So, I have already read all the rules to this. I love all of the wizards in this one. They are definitely more on the epic side. So this reminds me a lot of Mount Skull's Fire, which is the first set. If you don't know what this type of game is, it is a wild, wild ride where you are blasting your friends with spells that you construct. And it's more fun if you do wizard voices. I actually have a video where I kind of break down my relationship to these games and how much I love them. Um, I'll go ahead and link that um, up above right now. And then also I'll just have a link in the description as well, just in case you miss it. So definitely check that out if you are interested in this, but basically this has some quite very mature content. So uh, just be warned. But the theme I really love because it's kind of this crazy mesh of like adventure time and a crazy wizard duel, just like one big massive war of wizards. And I, I love that theme. I love the artwork. I think it's wonderful. And I, I also like the fact that you're building spells in this game. I mean, you're literally putting together basically a source um, and a delivery and you're kind of putting them in a line and then you're able to read out the spell which I think is so much fun. It's very thematic. It feels very cool. And there's like a ton of lore to it. And I know the lore, which is funny. It's like such a nerdy thing of me, but like literally one of the things that made me most happy like about this set is that in the very first set, there was a, uh, a wizard that you could play called Krastar. What a beautiful, beautiful man. But Krastar ends up becoming an actual source of a spell in this set. Therefore, you can basically be casting Krastar's spell instead of Krastar casting other wizard spells. And I think that's just awesome to kind of see the lore kind of come through. And there's a ton of lore, but it's it's all weird and all jumbled around all of the different box sets. But I got Anarchy at the arena and I got a crap ton of other Epic Spell Wars stuff and I might be doing a video on that. If you're interested in me talking about Epic Spell Wars again, please comment down below and let me know because I would like to talk about it again, but I also don't want to like throw it on anyone if people don't really want to listen. So um, there's another Epic Spell Wars box coming, but like I said, I organized it by box size and that one's a little bit bigger. So let's see what we've got next here. This one, as you guys know, I am a huge fan of the theming of anthropomorphic animals. Uh, there were a couple of games that I bought based purely on the theme and artwork being beautiful and based on the fact that Kate's favorite board game artist is Andrew Bosley. Uh, her favorite game is Everdell. So I felt like there was a couple of games that I found were essential to pick up for me and her. But we were actually able to play this already. This is River Valley Glassworks. Uh, this is a game where you're basically playing a glassworks company trying to collect uh, these glass, which are beautiful little stones in here, plastic stones. Um, and you're pulling them off of a river and then you are trying to place them on your board. It's actually kind of a simple game to learn and play, but the actual um, puzzle of it is very 
not simple. You're trying to basically score uh, columns and rows, but you're only gonna score your two tallest columns and then your rows, uh, they have to be connected from left to right in order to score them, or you basically score a variable amount depending on how long you were able to connect from left to right. So there's this like whole puzzle. And also the, the reason why it's even more interesting is that the different colors, there's more rare and less rare ones, and you don't really know what's coming out of the bag as you're picking them up from the river. Um, and so you're trying to strategize, do I wanna put the less rare ones earlier in my scoring board or later in my scoring board? Um, and that's really puzzling too, because you might not see them again if you put them, like if it's a really rare resource and you put it earlier, then you might not get a column of it um, or uh, you know be able to go really far in the rows. So it's, it's a fun game, it's a fun game. Um, and also Andrew Bosley, Animal Artwork, that's a win-win. I mean, honestly, very, very well done. This game is beautiful. Uh, and he actually signed, he was so nice. Andrew Bosley signed uh, an Everdell card for Kate, which was super, super sweet. All right, next game is a game that I did not get at Gen Con, but I got because of Gen Con. I tried to get there and buy this game every single time and I could not get it. And it was very irritating. <laughs> this is going to be Tiernanog. This is a game that I it was actually probably one of my most anticipated at Gen Con, which is funny because I, originally I was thinking nobody's gonna be wanting to get this game. I, it seems like such a niche game that people wouldn't really want to get. Um, boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong. I guess they just had really limited copies, honestly. So there was like only 12 copies or so available because they were doing a reprint. Uh, so I was not able to get my hands on it. But my good friend Max from Table Knots was like, hey, I saw that there was a copy on Noble Knights. I figured out it's the retail copy and there's a Kickstarter copy coming out. So um, I'm totally okay with getting the retail copy because at this point, I don't even know if I actually like the game. I just really love Celtic mythology and saw this theme and was like, that is sick. So I went ahead and ordered it on Noble Knight Games and was able to secure a copy and I got it by the time I got back from D23, which was awesome. Uh, so stoked. Um, I'm very excited to play this. It is uh, kind of a tableau builder sort of puzzle game and the main mechanic of acquiring cards is almost an area control game where you're placing out your storytellers in between cards and the cards are in a grid and then in kind of like as you're placing them out then you're pulling them out in reverse order and as you pull one of your pieces back you can collect a card that it's adjacent to so there's some strategy and kind of where you're placing it and also you have to be weary about who you're by because they might be kind of going for some of those things that you're going for so um, Tiernanog. I don't know exactly all the details of gameplay, but I am very excited to try it. And if I do, and I, I if I do, I think I want to cover this one on the channel because I think it just kind of matches that vibe, you know, it's a good look. Uh, so yeah, definitely let me know if you're interested in this. Um, I certainly am. Okay, next one is one that I had on my list on one that I wanted to check out at Gen Con. This is another two player asymmetric board game called Pagan. Um, there's a little subtitle, Fate of Roanoke. So one player basically plays the hunter and one player basically plays the witch. And that is about the extent of knowledge. Um, I don't really like to demo games at conventions because when I go around, um, it stresses me out more to be kind of being taught a game in a very, very loud environment. So usually I just try to do a little bit of research before and if there's enough, there's enough. Honestly, with this one, I heard asymmetric two player game. And like I said, I wanted to get more two player games. So uh, this really, really intrigued me. And I thought that the artwork was really, really pretty. I like that dark, um, artwork look. It looks, looks very grim fairy tale almost. It looks very dark. I, I love that. This theme is really cool. I'm very excited to try this out. I know that it's card driven and I have heard that it plays somewhat, and I don't know, don't, don't quote me on this, but I've heard that it plays somewhat like Netrunner. So that does make me very excited for a two player asymmetric card game that plays maybe somewhat like Netrunner. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So that is Pagan, I already forgot the name, Fate of Roanoke. All right, we're, we're getting close. We only got three more titles to go through. 
The next one is one that I got in the same box as another. So it is another Epic Spell Wars title. And this is super, super glossy. It's super fancy. This is the Epic Spell Wars Annihilageddon 3. So there are basically different boxes. This is for the deck building game. It's a different game than the spellcrafting one. Um, I actually like the spellcrafting one more, but I've been collecting these deck building ones because it is also a really fun deck builder with just wild, wild results. I got a lot more, like I said, in that package. I, I, I went ahead and just got the biggest stretch goal that I could. Um, so if you guys want to see all the crazy things that I got, like statues, literal statues, um, yeah, definitely let me know if you guys are interested in seeing more. Um, but yeah, this one is kind of the third set, which adds, um, it, it's a lot of different things, like I said, content warning, um, but it does add basically the devil as a playable character. And so that is kind of interesting where you can have, you know, other players playing their own deck and then the devil player basically working on you know, just deterring everyone from it. They have their own kind of deck of cards. There's a lot of like really cool concepts within the card play there. And I, I am excited about that dynamic. I don't know if I'll enjoy this one as much as the first set because that one's still my favorite so far because it's just kind of clean and simple. Um, but yeah, the extreme nachos was a little bit too much for me maybe, but I liked some of the cards that came with it, some of the legendaries. This one seems to come with a lot of really, really cool stuff. I'm very excited to try it out. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, Epic Spell Wars Battle for Nihilageddon. And now, or sorry, Epic Spell Wars Annihilageddon. No battle, no battle. I, there is battle, but not in the title. Just gonna set that one back there. Okay. I love how we're going to go from like very not wholesome game to probably one of the most wholesome games that I that I got. Uh, this is Harvest. And this was a game that I was so excited about um, when I first saw it, because once again, if you know my channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of Wes Anderson and Fantastic Mr. Fox is one of my favorite movies of all time. And for me, when I saw this box cover, this looked like Wes Anderson, the board game. And I've played it already, and, I, and I'm happy to report that it is very, very fun, but also that it feels like Wes Anderson, the board game, slightly. Um, and I just knew that Kate would be so excited to see this game, too, because, you know, me and her just really love the cute animal artwork. I mean, this is a farming game at its core with worker placement. It is adorable. I went ahead and just jumped in and bought the Golden Edition. Um, sometimes I do that because I just want to. Um, other times it's because I know exactly what I'm getting. In this case, I saw that the the plants, the seeds were going to be wooden, um, wooden pieces. And I think that that like aspect would be easier to actually work with the dual layered board. So there was a technical reason why I felt like I wanted to get this version, even without playing the game. And I was excited to try it out. Happy to report once again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Only thing that was kind of slightly disappointing was that I thought that there was going to be animal meeples for all of the characters that you get in the game but actually that's not true you only get them for four um and that was kind of disappointing because the the character that i wanted to play the most was the fox character and i didn't get the meeples for that one so i just had to use the wagons which is totally okay this is like literally not a problem i'm just i'm just telling you kind of some of my thoughts uh, but so there is an actual separate meeple pack and I should have looked into the fact that that came with the rest of the animal meeples that you get. Um, but still a little bit disappointing seeing as it's called the golden edition and it comes with the meeples. You, I just thought that it would come with all of them, but it does not. I get it. I mean, it would be very heavy if it had all of the wood, uh, the wood meeples. So happy to report that this game is a uh, very very fun and it's actually a re-implementation of a game of the same name and i did not know that um but this one's definitely going to be on the channel because like i said i enjoyed it quite a bit i want to talk about it so stay tuned for harvest more harvest content all right last but not least oh psh, sorry that also has a solo mode and the solo mode looks very fun and I'm trying to get more into playing solo games, especially because there's a lot of life changes happening right now and I'm going to be home a lot more. So solo modes, good. Um, there's another game, uh, Tiernanog, that has a solo mode that I'm interested in and River Valley Glassworks that has a solo mode that I'm interested in. Okay, last game, um, opposite of solo, 
Um, though apparently this also has a solo mode, this is going to be Flock Together, the other game that has the beautiful animal artwork by Andrew Bosley. This is the last game that I'm going to be talking about today, but this I got actually signed by Andrew Bosley as well as the designer Matt Mundy. So I was very excited to once again meet uh, Andrew, he was so nice. He was very, very, very sweet. And uh, this is a cooperative game that goes basically one to five players. Uh, and I mostly got it to play two player with Kate, but we'll see how that goes. I believe we're playing later tonight, so that should be exciting. But Flock Together is where you're gonna be playing chickens and you're trying to protect your coop. Um, away from all of the predators and the predators and the chickens all come with like these cute little booklets. And that was something that really interested me was that these little booklets, you kind of open them up. And one of the things that when you're playing the character as the chicken, you actually get to see them go from like a little baby chick all the way up to a rooster or a hen. So you actually get to see the evolution and your abilities and capabilities change as you're growing. And also, likewise, the villains in the game also change and grow. And I thought that was really cool concept, something that I really hadn't seen much before. Um, the artwork looked really, really engaging, so that excited me. I liked the fact that there was one version of the game, um, and it seems so deluxe, and it was a pretty good price point. Um, I think this only ran me like 60 bucks. I could be wrong, but it comes with a ton of wooden components, wooden resources, wooden meeples, awesome little eggs that remind me a lot of like wingspan style. But yeah, um, I'm very excited about this game. And once again, another anthropomorphic animal game by Andrew Bosley. I mean, you know, we got it. We got it. We got to promote all of that kind of great artwork that he does for all of the animals. Um, Oh my gosh, speaking of animals, I actually don't have it here with me. So I will be right back uh, because I got to show you a couple more things that I got from Gen Con that I forgot that, that, that were not games, but I do want to talk about them. I will be right back. All right, guys. Yo, 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 yo. You better believe it. Yes. I got some more stuffies and I'm so excited about them because... You know how much I love stuffies. You know how much Kate loves stuffies. That's why we do this. Um, but also now, this was the first year where I was thinking specifically, I wanted to get these for my son um, because Wanderson actually really, really likes, uh, at least right now, he really, really enjoys um, sucking on these stuffies and playing with them. So we got some Everdell stuffies. I got three of them. Um, so I've, I've almost got the whole collection. I think the only one I'm missing is the owl now. There's like six of them. Um, but... The, the beaver, adorable. I love the little bow tie, his little, his little fit, so, so cute. Um, I also got, I know this is the toy maker, the bunny toy maker. She's really, really cute. I love that her like little nails right here are uh, painted. That's adorable. She's got a little toy there. Um, and then also last but not least, this is the king. He's got the purple cape. Very adorable, and Wanderson already loves these. He's been playing with them. He's been sucking on them, loves their ears and stuff. He's not teething yet, but he's like pre-teething, so he really wants to just like, like a lot. So, um, adorable. I had to show you guys because I was so excited about these, but guys, that is actually it for the Gen Con haul. I hope that you enjoyed all of the games that I got, and... Um, the stuffies and all the fun stuff. Uh, it's been a little bit, but I'm so glad to be back. And now that I'm back from all these trips, hopefully more content coming soon. Please drop down below what games you want to see me cover on the channel. What games do you want me to talk about in more detail? I would love to hear from you down there, but hey, that is it for the video. Let's go ahead and drop the beat. Bye.